All right, so we just got done making another little climbing spot right there for the billy goats. So they'll have another spot they can lay on. That spot will give them afternoon sun and uh, so they can kind of pick where they want to be. And they'll have two spots that they can climb up on so if one is uh, sleeping on top of one of the spots they'll have another one to for the other one to go to. What? So I'm getting ready to go and route and pull all of my SD cards again. Um, I try to do it a couple of times a week. I often forget, but I try to do it a couple times a week. Um, and I think one of my one of my cameras might have dead batteries, so I need to check on that as well. Um, but I was out running some errands today. Uh, among other things, looking at properties for my parents. They are still um, planning to move down here to Alabama from the Midwest and um, I'm still helping them kind of look for a property to build a home on. And uh, side note, I actually may have happened upon the perfect neighborhood for them. Uh, they had one that they were kind of looking at and the property was already sold and this one reminds me a lot of that neighborhood. Very nice and very similar to where they currently live uh, as far as all of that goes. Um, but anyways, I really hope they get moved down here before too long. Uh, while I was out running errands, I swung by the post office and had lots of packages waiting for me there today. Mostly things that I had ordered from all over the place, but one of my packages was a surprise. And in it was some handmade, hand-sewn goodies from one of my sweet subscribers, one of my YouTube friends. And look at this. Isn't this adorable? Let me try and black out some of the light so you can see it. Isn't this adorable? Oh my goodness. Okay, so first off, I love plaid. That's just, I do. I love plaid. And it's a rooster and that that kind of looks like uh, foghorn out there doesn't it so very pretty and so she made me this tote bag and then there was a little I would call this a mini quilt so right there and of course there was a card the card had sunflowers all over it and she had some extra fabric and so she made me some pillowcases again with the uh, sunflowers all over it isn't that pretty so I just wanted to say thank you very much to Chris for your very thoughtful gift you know I always love getting uh, mail from my subscribers, my YouTube friends, my blog friends, and it, it's always a very pleasant surprise whether it's, you know, a handmade gift like this or just a little letter. Every one of them always just brings such great joy to me because it really means a lot for um, it really means a lot to me for those of you who do that to take that time and send me a note or a letter or even an email. I, I appreciate every one of them. All right, so let me put on some boots and we will go on a walk. So we just got done doing the uh, Bucklings climbing area out there. And I don't know if you guys saw my last video right there. Uh, we have a spool that came with our original goats for them to climb on while well, the weather has done it in and we're gonna need to pull that out and find something else um, we already have kind of a, like a little cinder block jungle gym over there for them to climb on and these guys love love it they're all over it all the time um, but yeah that spool the spool is toast. Hi Franny. Hi Nancy. Hi Addie. Hi babies. 
So yeah, we will uh, definitely need to pull that spool out here. It's kind of been in decline for a little bit and, and now it's just like toast. It's not treat time yet. A little longer. So I mentioned in my last video, hold on. So I mentioned in my last video how I went to the chiropractor for the first time because I've been having a lot of um, problems with my neck. And this has been, really this has been going on for a decade. And um, my neck is actually the reasons I first started using um, essential oils because I had been given steroid shots and opioids and <laughs> the whole nine yards and nothing was working. Um, and a friend of mine who is very knowledgeable about oils uh, asked me if she could put some oils on my neck. And after months of complete and total misery, I was pain free in, in about 40, 45 minutes. And so that is what kind of sold me on oils. And so since then, I've used lots of essential oils for different things, um, from headaches to joint pain and all of that. And of course my neck. Well, uh, the oils haven't really been working and I, in the last year or so, I've been using a CBD stick, um, and that helped a little bit, but now that's not working either. And so that's why I ended up breaking down and going to the chiropractor and learning that I have bone spurs on my spine and that I have osteoarthritis, which I don't think I mentioned in the other video. Um, to be honest, it kind of makes me think about things really hard about the future of our homestead. Now please understand, <laughs> I am not giving up my homesteading dream. Uh, you know, I have joked repeatedly that um, if someone can't find me someday and there's no sign of me anywhere, no one's heard from me for ages, look out in the pasture because I'm, I'm probably slumped over on the tractor seat. But, you know, we, we have this homestead and this is where I'm going to breathe my last, Lord willing. Um, homesteading is definitely where I've always wanted to be, it's where I want to be, and I have no, no thoughts of giving it up. But it does make me think hard about the future of what we're going to do here, because knowing that, now, I preface this with, I don't know how this will progress for me. Osteoarthritis is a degenerative type of thing. It gets worse over time. Um, for some people, worse than others. Uh, some people can learn to live with it. Some people can be completely, you know, debilitated. I'm praying I'm the former, not the latter. Um, but I do have to face that hard reality just, just based on the amount of pain that I've been in, which like I said in my other video, I haven't really shared with you guys. You'd have to have a keen eye to notice me wincing here and there, but I try to try to hide that from the camera because I uh, I do have a pretty high pain tolerance, and I'm good at good at the poker face. I love how these trees become spirals from the vines growing up them. Check that out. There's a few in here that I think would make really cool walking sticks at some point. Look at this one. Look how this is bent over. Pretty wild.
when I say that I have to rethink things a little bit, I mean in regards to physical abilities. Um, I need to think about how many things I put on my plate. Now, that said, um, when we bought our property, and I've talked about this before, we intentionally bought a smaller home for several reasons. Uh, to include um, the cost of maintaining it later on, utility costs and things like that. The bigger the house, the bigger the bills. Um, so we are very mindful about that. We, we bought our property with the mindset of the long run. Um, we thought about, you know, having bad knees or, you know, whatever the situation that we would want to have a one-story home because of that. Because this is our forever home. This is where we plan on growing old and, and spending the last of our days after 25 years of army life and 19 homes as adults, not even counting our childhood homes. Um, that, that's a lot of moving and we really didn't want to have to do it anymore. I mean, of course, there's always the asterisk because sometimes the Lord has other plans for you. But as far as what we had on the agenda, this was to be our last home. Um, so when we had bought it, again, there was nothing on it except the house and the barn shed. Uh, there was no infrastructure, there was no fencing, no garden beds, no animal shelters, no animal fencing, nothing like that. And so we have done that all, you know, since we've lived here the five and a half years, five and a half years, something like that, um, almost six years. And, you know, I had talked about um, reworking the garden this year which is still in the works and and now knowing what I know um, I think this was definitely a wise decision because it'll be consolidating the garden into one area and making it easier to maintain I plan on building more raised beds um, which will be easier on the back and all of that um, easier to work on and maintain and everything so this is definitely the right decision as far as that goes but then it makes me think about the other things uh, the things that I had planned for instance um, bees uh, having an apiary on the homestead has been a big plan and this coming year is when I was planning on doing that but honestly I'm having second thoughts now because uh, Mr. Smith, and again, you know, we keep a lot of things private, but he has a bad back and he's got a really bad shoulder. <laughs> um, jumping out of perfectly good airplanes for years on end will, and slamming into the ground will do that to you. Um, he was a toad jumper once, and if you don't know what that is, look it up. Most people don't survive that. Um, so he's got, he's got his own physical issues going on, and... Um, beehives, uh, to lift them and all of that, they're really heavy. And, you know, I've already bought some. I, I have two beehives that I was planning on putting together, but now I'm rethinking that because I know how heavy each of those layers is. And if we have physical limitations down the road, I don't know that we'd be able to do that. So honestly, I'm thinking about maybe selling those and if we do decide to go the bee route, maybe going with the flow hives. Um, I'm gonna have to do a little more homework on those. Um, I do know a few YouTube channels um, that have them. So, gonna have to think about it and do a little research and figure out if that might be a better route because I don't want to jump into um, doing something that I'm not going to have the physical ability to do down the road. Um, yeah. And that, that reminds me. So, Doug and Stacy, off-grid homesteaders, um, wonderful people, very outgoing, and 
charismatic folks. Uh, I met them, I've met them a couple of times now through the Homesteaders of America conference. Well, they actually did a speaking this, this past October this year on homesteading while you age. And I missed that one, but I think, <laughs> I think I might need to go ahead and watch that, um, that speaking um, session from the conference and just see what they have to say because I mean I'm 49 years old I'm not a spring chicken but you know I'm not you know decrepit or anything like that yet but I do need to be mindful and um, think long term as far as what we're doing around here um, which speaking of homesteaders of America all of the conference um, speaking sessions, workshop sessions, or whatever you want to call them, they are all online now. They went up th this past week. And if you are not a member of Homesteaders of America, uh, you can join and it is a set price, an annual price for your whole family. And you can join, you can go on there. If you get a VIP membership, you can go back and watch every session from every year of the Homesteaders of America conference, um, every session that has been put online, not just the 2021 session. Um, so I have a link to that. It is an affiliate link uh, down below. I just signed up to be one of their affiliates. Um, so if you are interested in that, um, I would love for you to click the link underneath this video and check that out. It is definitely worth it. I think there is just tons of great resources through Homesteaders of America, not only through the conferences, but there's also member uh, discounts and perks for being a Homesteaders of America uh, member. So I am just, um, I'm just going to be doing some reevaluating things here on the homestead and figuring out what will be working best in the long run with the knowledge now that my own physical um, capabilities may be limited <laughs> sooner sooner than I thought and I don't know if you just heard that but Sophie Sophie is hollering it is dinner time so Mr. Smith has named that rooster right there one of our younger Icelandics Flopper top. <laughs> Flopper top. Although his floppy top is actually standing up a little bit better than it was before. Flopper top. So those Icelandic hens are actually getting ready to move out to the other flock with uh, Yosemite Sam and the and the girls out there, and then. Flopper Top and Little Red over there will stay with this flock as my backup Icelandic roosters. Um, excuse me, Addy. What are you doing? Franny! <laughs> She's like, mine all mine. <laughs> Alright you guys, so it is evening now and it's about time for dinner. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, there will be another video going up tomorrow. Tomorrow I will be sharing the casserole recipe that I mentioned. This is actually for a side dish casserole, one of them that I make for Thanksgiving. And I filmed it when I was doing all of my pre-Thanksgiving uh, cooking. and. Well, I'll just go ahead and tell you. It is my sweet potato casserole. Now, my dad 
came down a couple years ago and it was Thanksgiving time and I cooked a huge spread like I always do and he swore up and down he did not like sweet potato casserole. I saw him take multiple helpings of my sweet potato casserole. Um, I think partly because number one I use real sweet potatoes, fresh sweet potatoes. I don't use stuff out of a can and I don't put a ton of sugar in the sweet potatoes themselves either. I like to really taste the sweet potatoes. Now there is sugar that goes on top in the streusel sort of type of topping that I put on top, but there's no marshmallows or anything like that. And I will say that my sweet potato casserole is my favorite sweet potato casserole. And it is one of those casseroles that again, I've got to make for every special holiday. So that is the recipe that I will be sharing with all of you tomorrow. So that is it for today. Thanks for hanging out again here at A Good Life Farm. My name is Constance, and I will talk to you all next time.